this as we have seen. This is why we all networker, we call Dubli the ultimate final home. And you've heard in the explanation previously that what is in it for you in Dubli? Why you're doing Dubli? With all the potential, with all the income that does not exist in any other network marketing company today. Whether it's like from the realistic income of the shopper or the fast income from the network marketing. So this combination, this perfect marriage, made it the networker's ultimate final destination. And if you compare, you know, my last MLM company, I was building a company called QNET. You know, QNET for me was a great company. I've learned a lot from it. And it was the best at that time. But again, <clears throat> when someone asked me, why did you join Dubli? And you were teaching us not to jump from company to company. Because jumpers never make money. It's a fact. A network marketing company, I mean, network marketing company is like a marriage. It's too easy to have, to have more than one girlfriend, but almost impossible to have more than one wife. So network marketing is like marriage. You are managed to a company. You're building it. So it's not because I have found a better company. It's not because I have found a company that pays more. It's not because here the income plan is higher. It's none of all, all of these things. It is because you can see all the network marketing company when I was there. Let's say they were competing like the sport cars. The McLaren, the SLR Mercedes, the Bugatti, the Ferrari, the Lamborghini, the Austin Martin. It was not even there. This is an air jet. This is a company that is rewriting the history of network marketing. Cleaning the history of network marketing. And we know in some countries the reputation of network marketing become worse than drugs. You can go to any country like Malaysia, the home of networkers. In Malaysia, they have registered company more than the population itself. The number of registered companies in Malaysia more than the population of Malaysia. So you go to Malaysia and you tell someone, MLM, 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 it gets a heart attack. Why? Because of the bad experience. Because of that, what not makes sense. Now this is writing a new history. Because we have fixed the broken model. We make it make sense for people. I don't force people to buy things they hate or they don't like to join an income plan. I give people to choose buying what they want to buy. So you know why. And you've heard it loud and clear. Now what I'm here today to show you is how you can make it happen. Now you've seen the potential. You've seen why all networkers all around the world are jumping to Dublin and why they're doing it. Now, let's know together how to make it happen. Whatever I'm going to share with you, I really don't have time to share it all, but I try to be fast, is the only possible way on earth for you to make money. I promise you, if you don't follow this, you will never make money. Whatever I'm going to show you is a collective of more than 300 years experience with all the leaders, only from the Diamonds team. By the way, the Diamonds team leaders collectively have more than 300 years in network marketing. So this training, it has more than 3 billion years of experience collectively because it's all the leaders all over the world. You go to any network marketing company on this earth, you will have the same training. You will go to any successful team building a system on earth, you will show them, showing you this training. So this training, I call it the getting started training. The pillars of your success. What are the pillars that you need to apply, follow, to succeed? Make this, teach your team, you make money. Don't make this, you set home better. Because that's the shortest, the shortcut, that's the easiest way to make it happen. Okay? So, I want you to listen to what I'm going to tell you with an empty cup. 
because I know some of you have long experience in network marketing, but also I know some people who claim to have a 20 years experience in network marketing, but it was only a one year experience repeated for 20 years, good? So we are people that we did not quit networking. We've been networking since 1998. So we are up to date. We have the latest version. So if you are Pentium 2, we are Core i7 4th generation for people who know IT. So let us show you how to do it. Very simple, very innovative, and systematic. Do we all agree? So no one take it like as hard feeling. You know this is my way. So if you hate me, no problem. I have a lot of people who still love me. Love Good? <laughs> so I'm just kidding, guys, because it's like I don't like to sugarcoat. I like to be so straight. We say in Arabic, your friend is the one who makes you cry to protect you from people laughing at you. Not the one who makes you laugh and do not give a shit if others laughing at you. I can go to that extra. So this is who we are and this is how we're going to work with you because we love you all. At the end of the day, I always tell my people in my inner side, I don't know why I start to love you more than my kids. Because they make money, right? It's very common sense. It's a common uh, rule between everyone. We all work and help each other. So let me start with our training which is called Getting Started Training, which is the basics and the most important foundation of our training. Trust me, anything extra are accessories. Now after that training, I'll give you the link of the continuation, which is the follow-up and handling objection. Good. <clears throat> you need to know why. We are going to talk about six pillars today. Six important things. That do six things. You do them right, duplicate them, guaranteed you can retire. Guaranteed you can make a million dollars. The number one is called the dreams and the compelling reasons. The first pillar. Second is the commitment. Third is the art of in, uh, uh, prospect list and contact list, your capital. Fourth is art of invitation. Fifth is art of presentation. Sixth is follow up and handling objection. Good? Now the sixth one is the total complete separate training which I'm going to give you the link but also I'm going to pass. First, let's start by the first pattern. Dreams. The things that every one of us get allergy from. The things that we started to forget about or even don't feel we need to talk about since we left college. Because the only and the first purpose in your life for you to be successful in any particular area of your business, work, career, marriage, is to know why. You have to know why are you doing this? Why do you do doubly? Why do you work? Why you get married from this wife? Why you have this girlfriend? Why are you doing this? You need to know why. Because the moment you know your why, and it's enough strong to make you believe in what you do, then you are unstoppable. Facts does not count. When you have a strong why, which generates a strong belief of what you do, then facts do not count. All will follow. So first, why do they join Dublin? Is it for a second income? Or is it for to pay back my loans? Or to buy my dream house? buy my dream car, help people to learn and earn, security for my family, travel the world, children's education, or be your own boss. Why did you do this? We have to divide our first pillar into two. We have to divide it into compelling reasons and dreams. First of all, I want every one of you to write down Tonight, five things you need to have urgently and as soon as possible. Five things that if it will not happen, it creates your pain. This is what we call your compelling reason. 
the thing that are going to create within you the burning desire. Okay, what is the difference between the compelling reason and a dream? A compelling reason is something if you don't have, you will be in pain. Like I have to pay a loan in six months, if I don't, I'll be jailed. I have to get someone to the hospital, God said no. I have to, you know, uh, help my father retire because if not, he's getting too old, too sick, and I don't have enough money to do this. I have to put my kids in school. I have to get married. I am now almost 40 something and I'm not yet married. Whatever the reason is, know your compelling reason. Every one of you have a different reason, which can be nothing for the other, but the whole world for you. So write down the thing that you want to have be done very soon, very fast, and a must. Write them down. Read them every single day like a doctor recipe. Why do I say this? And what is the criteria of transferring dreams into facts? The number one criteria is start believing. Because when you start believing in what you do, then you can think outside the box. Some of us say, I want to achieve a sales director in one month. Some of you say it too difficult. Some of you see it so simple. Why some achieved it, why some not? Why some of the people are making 10, 20, 50 thousand dollars a month and some of you are still making hundreds a month? It's still no different. You are in the same world, in the same life, under the same circumstances, in the same company. It's all within. It's not the blow of the wind that determines your destination. It's the set of the sail. Because the same wind blows on us all. Always remember this. It's not the blow of the wind that determines your destination. It's the set of the sail. Because the same wind blows on us all. You can say an employee at the end of the month swearing at his boss, saying he's not fair, he's not giving me a prize, he's not supporting me, he's not helping me. And at the same day, another employee, he will be partying with his people because he got an appraisal in the same department under the same boss. Now weak people, what they say, that guy he have wasta. Or he have like, what do you call wasta? Sheikh Zama, what's wasta? A source or something. This is an excuse to excuse your failure. It is not right. Why he succeed? It's all start with them because he wants to be successful. Let me give you a very simple story. To make you understand how powerful it is, then we know how can we convert dream into reality. Now, <clears throat> all of us, okay, we have worked one day to a limit that we can't even move. We have worked to a limit that we got extremely exhausted. That maybe 11, 15, 16, 20 hours of continuous work. You were so exhausted, so tired, you cannot even move. Let's say, I want all of you to imagine that you work as a laborer in the construction building. Okay? Let's all imagine this one. We work as a construction laborers in a construction building, and that construction building is only four stories. They don't have what we call the host, which is the elevator outside to take the laborers between the floors. So we have to go upstairs. And you go to your construction site at that day at 6 a.m., ready to start your work, and you saw that foreman waiting for you with those big mustache, and every day he must swear at you, you're late, what the hell you're doing, start to work, you idiot, blah, blah, blah. And as usual, we just swallow, because I have to make a living for my kids. Then, you started, he told you that tomorrow we have an inspection that the consultant, or I mean the engineers are going to check the final floor, we have to finish the casting. So you have to carry the blocks 
from the ground floor up to the fourth floor. You got through that from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. Continuously. Going up and down, up and down. So you are almost deadly exhausted. Now you were also forced to do an overtime until even 10 p.m. Because tomorrow is the final day. You have to do it or you will be terminated. It's not a choice, it is a must. And you did that for an extra four hours. Now imagine you go to the market and carry some heavy stuff for two, three hours in the market. You go home with a back pain, with a head pain, you swear at everyone at the house, you don't want to hear anyone's voice. Imagine you have done this for almost 16 continuous hours. That heavy body work. Now you go at home, you enter your house, you're living with your family, and you saw the first thing happen to you is you will not even open the door like this, right? You're gonna throw your hand on the door, huh? Because you don't have the power to carry your hand and hold the door thing and open it. You do like poof, like you're dead, خلاص. You can't even your back, everything's aching. You enter. Of course, you will not even think about changing clothes, having shower, all of these things. You will throw yourself on the nearest sofa or mattress. You will be deadly thrown down. Now at that particular moment, because you're so exhausted, your eye muscles is not properly operating, so you cannot close your eyes, so that you sleep with eyes open. You have your mother coming to you and asking for help. Said, son, tomorrow we have your uncle family coming over, so we have to move the armchair in the living room to the guest room. Big armchairs. What would you do? Mothers and heaven and all of these things, you know. You cannot. You are a person with no, only with soul. Zero energy. You cannot, you cannot do anything, right? You're going to continue sleeping. You don't even have the energy to respond back to her. Now, if the next day your elder brother or your father came to you and gave you some hard time, why did not you help your mother? You have a big list of reasons to make anyone shut up. No one can feel me. I worked for extra time. I'm the one who's paying for the house. I'm working like a donkey to make you guys survive. And you can feel how I was totally not even able to work or move. And you want me to help her. Please give a mercy on me. Let me feel as a normal human people. You know, I'm not a donkey. Even a donkey cannot take what I have done. You have that powerful reason to make anyone shut up, right? You are tired. You work overtime. You're the one paying for the house. You're totally exhausted. You can't breathe. So those are very strong reasons to make anyone believe of your failure of not helping your mother. Let's have the same situation, but and instead of your mother asking you, you saw your sister daughter or your daughter, the three, four years old kid, the one that you adore, the one that you can give your life for. You saw her jumping in front of your eyes while you're sleeping with your eyes open. And you saw that daughter going to the kitchen and someone had forgotten the tea boiler on the cooker. And the tea boiler cover is doing pop, 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 pop like this. What would you do? You would say, I'm tired. You would say, I worked overtime. You would see, I pay house bears. Would you do that? No. You know, if your house ceiling was that high, your head will hit the ceiling from the power of your jump. You will jump like an eagle. You will go. You will take her and not enough. You will spend another one hour yelling at people at the house. Who the hell lived the tea like the tea? How come you don't know you have kids? You don't know how to raise up your kids. From where the hell you got this energy? 
You were dead! Absolutely dead! Mind control your body. The only different happiness, you had a bigger wine. That's it. All what happened to you. Nothing changed. The same house, the same hour you work, the same person you are, the same muscles, the same mattress, the same... Everything is the same, 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 same. But what is different? You only had a bigger why. So if you don't know your why, you cannot succeed. Ladies and gentlemen, to be financially free in our business, it is simple but not easy. It needs consistent work. It needs that you have to give up some of your comfort zone. It needs that you have to give up some of those cinemas hanging out with girlfriends. It needs that you have to give up some of the playing cards with the guys. It means that you have to give up some of the comfort zone that you're living right now. You can do this once, twice, thrice, then you get bored. If you don't have a bigger why. This is the reason. This is the reason when some people ask me why I don't, ma I don't make money at network marketing. I told them because you build your business the same way I'm trying to be fed. Exactly. The style you build your network marketing business is the same style I'm using to reduce weight. And you can see how fit am I. Right? What happened is, I start to be so much energized for two months. I do eat nothing. Water salads. Water salads. Exercise. Boom, boom. Lose 10, 20, even 30 kg in two months. Then after two months, <clears throat> I miss my burger. Ah, elevation burger. That fat one. So sexy. I miss that one. So sometimes, you know, we fat people, we used to enjoy food more than you enjoy toot. Sorry. You don't know? This is something that is happening. So what happened to me? I reduced 20, 30 kg. Then after that, it's like I'm revenging from myself. You bad Khaled, you lost 20 kg. I have to get a 40 kg. Then after six months, I get so excited again. I'm on diet. Then, again, how our business can never be done sometimes. It's either full time or part time, but consistent. Cannot be done sometimes. So some of you, you're so active for two, three months. Some of you even have generated a one month income of $13,000. But after six months, you look at him, he's generating $200 a month. Why? Because you're not consistent. So if you don't have the big why, you can never be consistent. If you don't know why you're doing this, and you can direct it with your business, you can never be consistent. Thus, you can never succeed in business. And not in business. If you go to the whole training for all self-development on earth, all type of training, you know, they start to tell you all secret of success, all bullshit. There's only one secret of success. One secret of any success on this earth is consistency. But now, let's study the human, how they think. To be consistent, you have to have a reason. To have a reason, you have to have a big why. Because the only difference between successors and losers is what? Successors, or what is success? Success is a series of failure to reach success. Life of successors are a series of failure to reach success. Now, the difference is this. A loser... He gets into the first or not. I don't want to call him a loser. Okay, a person who did not find his why yet. Okay? What happened? The first obstacle he find, he quit the business. He invite two, three people. They said no. Ah, it's not working for me. Then he signed up five people. They're not working. It's not working for me. I really feel sometimes 
I don't want to say disgusted, okay? <laughs> I really feel weird from some people when this thing happened to them. I asked them, guys, it is a million dollar business, right? Yes, it is. Treat it as such. If you want it to be a million dollar business, treat it as such. Now, if you open a boutique with one million dirham and you put your stuff there and five customers walks in, did not buy, you're going to close. Ten customer walks in, you're going to close. Hundred customer walks in, did not buy, you're going to close. Actually, the more rejection you get, the better you are. Because you start to think, why do you not buy? You put more advertisement, you make more strategy, you do some more things. But here, the more you get rejected, the weaker you are. What is different? Someone tell me. You don't yet find your why. This is your problem. Treat your business as a $1 million business. Please convince yourself that I have spent $1 million. And if I'm not work, I'm losing it. This is the only challenge we have in our business. We don't have negative motivation. We don't have a boss that's going to kick your tooth if you don't come on time and you don't do your work. Or we did not spend millions to start the business. That's why I like the PPA. That's why I like to build my team with the PPA package. Because it filters out the non-serious business out of my team. I only like to work with serious people. So serious, they go for that package. So that package helps you to filter out this one. Now, this is the first important thing of our business, which is the why. Know your why. And know your company reason. Now next, after I write those five company reasons, which I need to read them every single day. Every single day when I am alone. Because the problem of you don't read them when you're alone or when you're at the beach or when you're somewhere quiet, this conscious mind is almost sleeping. So if there's a big chance for those five things to penetrate into your subconscious mind and transfer into a belief. Because the problem is always when you say, I'm going to buy a $1 million villa from this business. Your conscious mind always reject. Because your conscious mind is built upon that you will die poor. Your maximum income per month is 10,000 dollars. This is what is built upon. So by reading those things consistently, when you're alone on the beach, on a quiet atmosphere, it gives a bigger chance for it to, sub to penetrate your subconscious mind. So it will transfer into a belief. And once it is a belief, then you are unstoppable. You're the bulldozer of your business. Now, the next part of our business, the first one we call it the stick. Now, this is the carrot. Because you have to have a stick and a carrot. If you don't have a stick and a carrot, it won't work. This is the carrot of our business, the dreams. Now, after I wrote down those five things I love to have, I must have, and if I don't have, I'm in trouble, which is called the company reason. Now, I want to write down my dreams. What I want to have, a better car, a better house, blah, blah, all of those things. Now, again, writing a dream will always stay a dream if it's not smart. Convert your dream into smart dreams. How? By having the schedules. What is smart means? <coughs> smart mean specific, measurable, achievable, readable, time frame. This is how your dream should be. By having this table, what I want to achieve, why I want to achieve it, the date you want to achieve it. This I call it the money dreams. You write down here the numbers. Let's say first month I want to make $3,000, $1,000. You write it down. Why you want to make it is more important than how much. Why I want to make that one. I have to be very clear why I want to make it. Then put the date, the deadline when you must achieve it. So in this way, your dream is specific, measurable, achievable, and readable 
with time frame. So you're converting your dreams into a series of smart dreams that can be achievable. And whenever you want to have a plan, let's say my plan is to start making $20,000 a month from Dubli business. It's like someone comes to me and woke me up at 6 a.m. and said, let's run 10 miles. What I'll tell him? Get lost. I can't. Can I run 10 miles? You, if you don't even care. How can I run 10 miles? But if you wake me up and teach me how to run 100 meters, the next day 200 meters, then the day after 500 meters, it's called breaking up the challenge. So when you want to make $20,000 a month, break up your target. That's what I'm going to show you at the end of the slide. I can show that every one of you can simply make $20,000 and if you don't, you're a moron. <laughs> Absolutely. I'll prove that to you. That any one of you can make it. $20,000 with very simple strategy. Simple. Okay? We'll get that after we go the whole thing. Now, so now we know what is my why, what is my compelling reason, and what are my money goals, and how to go about them. Then I go to the next pillar. Before I go to the next pillar, I want to, well, there's no time for movies. Let's put the movie at the end because we have no time now. Good. <coughs> we will add it after the video. Now, the second pillar we're going to talk about is called commitment. So first, I know my why. I know my targets, my dreams. Now I want to start making action and putting plans, make things work for me. So I have to give a commitment. Now again, this word people start to get allergy from. Why? Because commitment is the word that all people are so sensitive against. We don't like to be committed as a human. We like to live free. We like to do, you know, we don't like commitment in anything. Like you don't like commitment in relations. You don't like commitment in work. It's something that gives a heaviness in your heart. But we human are all doing commitment since years and years and years. But we are disguising it. We are hiding the name of commitment under some other word, which is job just over broke. You have been committed for the last 5, 10, 20 years to wake up every day at 6 o'clock in the morning. Someone has to wake up like crazy. And you just put the snooze bar, or oh, if I can get another five minutes of sleeping. <laughs> then again, eh, just more five minutes. Then you wake up, you dress up fast, you go and eat something. You don't know, sometimes you eat, you know, you swallow something by mistake. You just don't hurry. You put up your kids, you feed them, you know, sometimes the, the pets eat food because you're in hurry. You just grab them, throw them in the school, <coughs> and you go. Spending the whole day, and when it's like 1 or 2 a.m., p.m., you know, your head's full on your desk. Ah! You just, you go wash up your face, get ready. Then you wait for the manager. Then, ah, yes, 6 p.m., I can go back home. Then you drive two hours back. You go to your home. You watch that idiot box until you get in coma. Until the next day, someone wakes you up. 6 a.m., just five more minutes. You have been doing this for the last 5, 10, 20 years. This is the biggest commitment people can do. You know, the clock alarm is the worst invention on earth. <laughs> it is. Why should we wake up before we finish sleeping? Who said so? Who said I have to wake up before I finish sleeping? Why? <laughs> this is the alarm clock. Because I am committed, because I have to pay bills, I have to raise up my kids. So we have been doing this commitment for a long time to get peanuts at the end of the month. And when we want to make a million dollar business, you said, I am ready to give one hour a month. Okay, to buy a bicycle, yes, you can do it. 
So why you want your business to pay you 10, maybe 100 times more than what you earn by giving 45 hours a week? Why? How come it's fair? It's not. So <clears throat> to be fair on life, to be fair with yourself, have an equation. Like I put 45 hours per week to make this peanuts. Now I want to make 10 times more. I'm not telling you put 45, but 10 to 15 hours. My opinion, 15 hours a week is the minimum. Three hours per day. Five days per week. Two days off. Even Richard Branson worked more than this. So it is the minimum number of hours that you have to put. So the commitment is this thing that you have to be fair about. And we have two types of commitment. We have the time commitment and self-commitment. Time commitment is the time that you need to commit to build your business. That this is the time you will invest to build your Dubli business. Allocate the days and time and ask and stick to it regardless. Anything happen except emergencies. I will put a timetable. I'm going to put three hours every day for Dubli from this time to this time. And I'm going to treat that time exactly like my future time. I will never ever just get away from it. Remember, it is a consistent process. The business can be done full-time or part-time, but not sometime. We need to create a sort of consistency, which will create the cash flow, and then the retirement. Then, <laughs> example, every Monday, every Tuesday, every Thursday, 8 p.m., you, know, you choose, you put a timetable, <coughs> and that timetable you should give to your applying. You have to write a timetable of your commitment and hand it to your applying. So he knows that these are the days I'm committed to the business. So he can provide the support accordingly. He can be there or allocate someone else to be there to help you building the business, training your people, presenting your people. That is the time commitment. Now the second commitment is what we call self-commitment. The problem of our business, the challenge is that you cannot have people joining you if people feel that you're weak. People will never join you if you are weak, if you are not confident, if you don't feel that you are the person who is, who is going to lead them to success. Okay, how that can happen if you're not committed to improve your own skills by attending webinars, seminars, company summits, company events, attending the training, international calls, <coughs> developing yourself, hearing the training again and again, reading about your company. So the more information and knowledge you are, the more you be among the positive atmosphere with people who have the like-minded mentality, then you can never get that trust that I am going to sit with someone, whoever he is, I'm going to handle this objection. I'm going to have him done. So when you have that feeling, then people can say, oh, this is the guy I want to be with. Because our business needs support. So when the people feel that you're not the person to support, this is one of the ways or the reason they walk away. So you have to give yourself also the self-commitment of attending all the trainings, the event, the summit, with you apply being in that positive atmosphere. These are the two types of commitment that you have to give to yourself. Okay, let's move to the third pillar. Move, but move. <laughs> okay. Before we move to the third pillar, <coughs> this is the two type of commitment. You have to sign up with your downline. You and the person you sign up. Why? Because this will give him the trust that I am doing a serious business. That this guy is there to support me. This is the upline commitment. This is the new Diamonds member commitment. What is the upline commitment? <coughs> Which is you. 
I am the upline. I am the undersigned. Promise and commit to help you achieving your financial goals with Dubli. Support in managing your time and efforts. Train you, motivate you, and even provide another leader to be there with, with you if I'm not available. As long as you are being teachable and follow the right diamond system. I promise to deliver the highest ethical and transparent methods of training and this is my agreement and commitment to you. You put your name, signature and date. And here is where he has to sign. I am the undersigned, undertake, understand that I'm still new in this business. Thereby, I promise to stay teachable, trainable, to, uh, trainable to receive the right proper knowledge about this profession and to respect and appreciate that. I understand that any business needs effort and time and commitment, blah, 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 this is where you need to sign. So, and he has also to give you the timetable where he's committed to. So now I created what we call a source of consistency. I have committed people who wants to work with me because simply I will filter out my team who's not ever willing to do this. Good, you build the business alone. I don't have time to do it. Because I need people who want to work. I need to help people who want to help themselves first. But people who say, oh, maybe I'll try, maybe I'll do, then good. When you are ready, let's work together. Don't sacrifice your system. The moment you sacrifice five percent, they will sacrifice 20% with their team, their team will sacrifice 50% with team, and by the end you will have a team with no system. You will have a dead team. A system is there to make consistency in your group. Good. <clears throat> Let's move now to the third pillar. Prospect list. <clears throat> Prospecting. Start with your prospect list. This question. What is the capital of your business? Any business on earth needs a capital, right? Yeah. If you know a broke guy lives next to you, you go home tonight and you saw that guy and you is absolutely broke. And he tells you, I am going to open a Porsche car showroom tomorrow. What would you say? He is a moron or he is a moron. There's no third choice, right? Why you said that? Because he has no capital to start the business, right? And in our business, it's a million dollar business. Thus, it needs a capital. What's your capital? Prospects. See, Mr. Michael Hansen did not allow us yet to sign up camels, nor cows. So, so we only can work with people. So the only capital we have is people. Not yet aliens, camels, gas, only people. So this is your capital, your prospect list. Number one must be written. Successful people, they ain't things they don't think. You never ever write it down. You must, you never ever just put it up here. Ah, I have it in my mobile, I have it in my, no. It must be written, organized as I'm gonna show you now. Everyone goes into your prospect list, never ever prejudge. Never ever prejudge. Never ever prejudge. I say it again and again. <laughs> Every single person you know who is still breathing must go to your list. Why? Some people say, no, this guy is an absolute complete moron. How or why should I present him? Very simple. You don't know this moron who he will bring you. See, you might know that one guy, you know him for 10 years, he's been a total moron, failure after failure after failure, and everyone call him a loser. Good? And you don't want to present him. Now let's have two scenarios. <laughs> Scenario number one, that this guy, <coughs> when you bring him to our business, he will find it his elite opportunity to prove to everyone that he is not a loser. And he will work 10 times harder than you. We always say, what you lay up in skills, you make up in numbers. He knows that he's a loser. So he said, I'm going to make 
hundred percent a day. He will do what it takes to be not a loser. So this is what you want. Now scenario number two, he might be the same loser you really expected. But by chance, he invited you a diamond superstar. His cousin or his brother or his brother-in-law was someone who's going to build for you a 10,000 team in Ivory Coast. And it happened with us thousands of times. Thousands. I never started a country in my ex team of more than 50,000 people unless that country was generated from a moron. All the countries that we expanded, it came from losers in the team. But they have, you know, that guy or that guy, and then boom, you have one line. You never know. Never ever prejudge. Everyone must go to your list. Make initial prospect list of 150 names with their contact numbers, grade them, HWC, as I'm going to tell you. Why 150? Because you want serious people, right? Now, all the scientific on earth have proven that any normal person who reaches 21 years and above, he has a circle of influence at least 150 people. At least, or else he must be communicating with his dog or his cat. So any normal person, he has 150. You know, think of your friends, colleagues, neighbors, school friends, university friends, your brother-in-law, your relatives. You know, some of us have more relatives than what he needs. You know, even when you have a wedding party, you have to write a book of the names that you need to invite. We do, we, in this area, we network by, we're socially networker. So having less than 150 is not accepted, right? It's the minimum number anyone knows. So he write down those prospect lists. Now, how the prospect list look like? It looks like this. This is D. Look at me. Name? Contact number, even if you don't know the contact number, let's say you know your neighbor in the, in the building. You've been seeing him every day for the last eight years. Every day you saw each other in the left high high, but you don't even know his name. But you know that he, he drives a red Tida. So you write, my neighbor with a red Tida. So by the time you saw him next day, ah, good morning, how you doing? My name is Paul. Nice to meet you, you've been neighbors and idiots for 10 years, never talk. So give me your number. So you take the number. So when you have the name here, this is what you're gonna do. But if you don't have the name here, you will spend another 20 years high, and then you go. And maybe that particular neighbor will give you the 10,000. The moment you sign up with Dubli, you become what? Networker. And when you become a networker, your radar should start. Did it? Did it? You know, everyone works. It's like five hundred dollar. Did it? Right. So <laughs> write down everyone, but don't go and kidnap people, please. I'm just being cool. So just write down <laughs> the names of everyone. List it down. Put his contact number and then categorize. <clears throat> Category: HWC. Hot, warm, cold. Hot, warm, cold. Hot. Who are the hot? People who are ready to take it for you. So you'll have zero hot list. I know no one's ready to take it. What I mean is, hot are the most people that they trust. More than you trust them. Okay? Please, recognize what I'm saying. Hot are the people who trust you more than you trust them. Good? So you cannot trust someone, but he trusts you so much. You consider him hot. What I care in this part, people who trust you more than what who you trust. Because people who trust you are the highest people influenced by you. So they are the fastest people to join. So the hot category is the people who trusted you more. They're your hot. Say so like your, your, your brother, your cousin, your best friend. I don't know who else. Every one of us have five, maximum ten of hot people. Those, you have to categorize. Then W, 
is your warm contact, the daily friends, colleagues meet you every day. Cold are the contacts that you, let's say you call every Eid, every Christmas, every Ramadan, you call once in a year, twice in a year, or you see them once or twice in a year, but they still go there, okay? Now, when you start, now this is very sensitive. Now this is your capital, see? This is your capital. Now, you can lose the whole capital in the market and be broke, or you can use the capital and make, make it 100 times more, right? So now this is my capital. I have to be very sensitive working with it. Who should I start with first? Pot. So many of you is doing the state and mistake. They don't approach their circle of influence. They don't approach their home contacts. Guys, try to understand this. Your hot contact, especially, let's say, for married people, your wife or your husband, your brothers, the people that you see every day. Those people can make you or break you. If you don't get them first to the business, even if they don't join, but you must get them into the business. Two bad things happen. Number one, those people, they are used to see you every day coming home by 6 p.m. But after starting to bleed, <coughs> you're coming home at 10 or maybe 6 a.m. Depends. On, like, you know, <laughs> if you're like us, yeah. <laughs> okay, it depends. Let's say you're coming home every day at 9 p.m. Now, if it's a wife, what's going to happen? <laughs> Your girlfriend. You know, all the devilish things comes. You start, you know, looking at the mobiles, smelling the jackets for perfumes, looking for spots of uh, lipstick. All of these things start to happen. They start to question and start to nag. And you know when woman nags? Oh God. That's your secret open, by the way. <laughs> okay, and you know when they start nagging? You cannot get out of it. So why do you have to put yourself under this hell? You know, they have to know, they have the right to know where you are. They love you, they care about you, and they're always jealous. So they have to know. You have to bring them to see that you are in a good, reputated atmosphere. Oh, that guy is an engineer, this is a doctor, this is an accountant. Ah, oh, this guy is a wealthy guy, it's a businessman. They're all doing something good. And those people can help you a lot to build your business, even when they are at home. Like what my wife is doing, she's counting the checks. You know, she's helping. <laughs> you know, I remember before when I get, you know, my early years of networking, you know, when I was still an employee. I go to Abu Dhabi, okay, let's say I have prospecting, presentation, training, everything. She called me in the night. It's 12. It's like, where are you, honey? I was like, I'm, I'm Abu Dhabi. It's like, oh my God, you're still in Abu Dhabi. When you reach home, how can you wake up? You have a job. Go, go, I'll be back. And one year later, hi honey, how you doing? Good. Why are you in Abu Dhabi? How many sign up you have? <laughs> you know, everything changes, right? It's normal. Because they start to feel the change. They feel secure. They know what you're doing and all of these things. Plus, those people are going to affect you dramatically. Because they, we call those people dream stealers. Yes. Dream stealers. They don't steal your dream because they hate you. No, because they love you. And because they know there is too much scam out there in the world. So they said, I don't know what he do, but what I know he is surviving. So let me protect him for whatever he do. So for her or for him, you're eating, you're worried, so you're living, right? You're doing the minimum living in life, but you're living. So whatever thing extra you're doing, for her it might be scam, fraud might be hurting you. So she is trying to prevent you from it. So she steals your dream. No, it's a scam. Don't waste your time. Focus on engineering, blah, 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 in your job. That's why they must know. That's the worst thing that can happen if you don't do that. The second bad thing is those people also, they have friends, right? And they can be <laughs> approached by one of their friends. And they can sign up under one of their friends. Now, 
who do you think are going to support them more? You or that friend? Who is going to support your brother more, you or his friend? Who is going to support your husband more, you or his friend? So in this way, you are betraying him. Because you are letting him sign up under someone who can never ever support him like what you do. So that's why you must, these are one of the reasons. Number two, <clears throat> see, for anyone to join you, listen to this carefully, it's an equation. What that equation says, for anyone to join your business, it needs 50% of skills plus 50% trust equal 100% then sign up. That's an equation for anyone to join you. 50% skills, 50% trust, then he join you. Now when you just starting the business, when you are at the very beginning, your skills is not even 10%. <coughs> so if you start with your cold contact, who trust you 10%, you will end up 20% failure, absolute failure. Because the cold contact will ask you so much question, he don't trust you. How the company is making money? Who's behind the company? Show me the breakaway of the system. Show me. No, they don't know how to answer, you lost them. But if you start with your cold contact, yes, your skills is 10%, but they trust you 95%. So you still have 105, and you sign up. Then you tell your brother, shut up or I beat you up. Sign up or I beat you up. <laughs> when I invite my close people, if they tell me I want to think, I said, what? What the hell you want to think about? It's like, what you show me? I'm like, wait a minute. Do you know more than I do in this business? He said, no. It's like, don't you bloody trust me? He said, yes. Then sign up. Then I will explain to you more. Why you need to think? What you need to think about? I will think on your behalf. It's not up to you, it's up to me. Because I am the one who knows. And I brought you among the first people to be my right hand, to work together, to be the first people who achieve. So those people, it's, but you cannot say that to your manager at work. He will screw you outside the job, right? So this is why you have to start with the hot. Now, by the time you finish from the hot contacts, your skills is almost 30%. Then you can go with the warm contact who trusts you 70%. Now, by the time you finish from all your warm contacts, which like 100 people, you have done like 200 presentations. Now, you can even present a devil and you sign him up. You will have a strong presentation. You will have all the reasons, all the questions, everything. This is why you have to go with that flow. All the new people do this mistake. The day they sign up, you know what pops in their mind? Ah, I know that guy, he make a lot of online shopping. I know that guy, he's so wealthy and he has too much contact. I don't know, this is the wrong approach. This is the approach of the traditional business. No, our business work on circle of influence. That's it. You don't need to go in street to find people. You have more than enough of people that you know to make you rich and to make them rich. Good? So this is the proper approach and proper flow of how you can go about your contacts and how you can approach them. Okay, <clears throat> work with the upline leader. Always work in a team. Get in touch with your active upline leader regularly. Call him. Call him at least once a day. Work together in a team. Ask your upline to show you, one, <clears throat> how to invite your prospects. We'll talk about it now. Two, the first few presentations to your prospects. Your upline is committed only to make you five presentations. More than that, it's your responsibility. But he will be with you to support in handling objections. So every presentation he'll do it to you you have to hear it clearly and carefully. Because the sixth one, you will be doing it. Remember this. Now, let's go to the 
fear of most of people, inviting prospect. Now we got into a horror movie. <laughs> this is the, this is what I call it the easiest, simplest thing of our business. This is where people fail before they start even the business. This is where people hold the phone shaking. Hello? Come to the close line. As if they are going to, what, you're going to murder someone? You know what? You know, some people, when you ask them invite, they start to count their last times of their life because they get a heart attack. I'm going to invite this guy. Oh my God. Yes, I will. Hello, come. Because like, what the hell? Why are you so scared? Some people, they feel. Can you imagine? Some people, they get allergy. Some people, they say, mm, what will he think of me if he don't like the business? What is the worst thing can ever happen in the world? He will say no. He will not say no and beat you up. So why the hell some people